Hello guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Tenna, subscribe. I would love to have you here. And we're starting this week's video in my closet. This is just gonna be a short little video. I was actually not gonna have a video for this week because last week was just absolute chaos and I was too stressed and overwhelmed to like film anything. So I was just gonna be like, oh, no video, whatever, it's fine. We all need breaks. But then I realized I have been putting off preparing for a doctor's appointment for a while and i was like you know what let me film it to get me motivated to actually prepare for it and then it also might be helpful for some people i don't know if it is i shared this how i prepare i feel like a few times but never a designated video so i i just i just thought i would the appointment that i am going to is a cardiologist for my pots so if you're new to my channel i have various chronic illnesses i've gastroparesis just slow intestinal motility like pelvic floor dysfunction pots and hypermobile ehlers danlos syndrome so i was diagnosed with pots i think almost a year ago now which is honestly crazy to me because i don't know it, i to me pots is like it's like my side <laughs> my side illness my gi illnesses pretty much take up most of my suffering so to say but it definitely still affects me and it's definitely still something that I should follow up with the doctor uh, with. But it's going to be a new cardiologist because the last cardiologist that I went to last summer it was not a great time. I did not enjoy that experience that I just did not make a new cardiologist appointment because I didn't want to go back to them and I was just too afraid <laughs> to make a new one. But after some friends and family has encouraged me heavily to make an appointment, so I did. And then I got a recent Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome diagnosis and my geneticist wants me to have yearly echoes. So, yeah. So the cardiologist I'm actually seeing is an electrophysiologist, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But POTS is an autonomic nervous system disorder. Some people see cardiologists, some people see like neurologists for it. Here it seems, in Florida, it seems like most cardiologists not most cardiologists but it seems like I can really only find cardiologists that treat it so yeah I'm gonna go see a new one and I'm insanely nervous and I've been waiting three months for this three months I made the appointment I think in May and it's August 31st so this video will be up before I even go to the cardiologist so I won't have an update for you unfortunately but let's just start preparing for my appointment I feel like I'm talking a lot I'm sorry but this is specific to the video so in Florida there's two main hospital systems and right now they're using different systems so they can't see like my records and all of my other cardiologist related stuff is in the other system so this new cardiologist literally cannot see like any of my records when it comes to my heart stuff and tests that I've had in the past so I need to like get all of my records related to all the heart testing I've gotten done and gather them make copies of them so I can give them to the office. I have this binder and it's not really updated. Um, a while ago when I was working on figuring out my GI issues and I was seeing like different doctors, I just created a binder so that way I just had easy access to like all of my records, but I've been too lazy to update it. And I honestly haven't gotten much more testing done, which is good. So yeah, let's go ahead and find all of my cardiologist related stuff in here. Okay, I found all of my results and there's not that many. And I know there's one more, but I can't find it in my chart. I don't I don't know where it went. But to summarize, I have my I'm not gonna show you, obviously, but I have my tilt table results. I did a stress test. So I had the results of one of those. I did two of them, but I can't find the results of the second one. I can't even find the results of the first one anymore. And same with the results of my tilt table. I can't find them either. I don't I don't know. They just disappear in the chart. So good thing I printed them off when I did. And then I had two electrocardiograms um, back when I see, went to go see the cardiologist the first time. And the reason I'm bringing them is because they're abnormal but like I honestly don't know so the reason I'm going to see a different cardiologist and not going back to the other one other than just how they treated me they also I feel like weren't knowledgeable or chose to be knowledgeable in POTS so literally I have no guidance when it comes to POTS um, 
I don't even know how much salt I'm supposed to have. I don't even know what kind of compression socks I'm supposed to have. I don't even know what medications there are that would work for me. Like, they literally were just like, more salt, compression socks, and you're good. And I've been doing what I can, like, with that stuff. But, like, I honestly have no idea. They never told me, like, amounts. So, I feel like I just have no guidance when it comes to pots at all. So, even though my pots isn't bad and I may not even have to be on medication when I go see this new one, I just want some type of guidance because I feel like I'm just winging this on my own and I have no idea. So back to the electrocardiograms, the reason I'm bringing it is because it's abnormal, but it could also be like completely benign and I, that's fine, that's what, that's what I want. I want it to be benign, but another thing is they never explain these results. I tried asking them about what these mean because um, there's some type of like block, <laughs> it says, um, which could just be completely fine. But like they they won't just they won't explain it to me like they were just like yeah whatever like it, it they I can't even remember what they said but even my mom tried asking because I brought her to an appointment and like they just would not give me a straight answer so hopefully this cardiologist is better and can give me an answer on what this means so there's that and then the last thing I'm going to do is I just have a printout of my genetics like my geneticist wrote this huge long thing about the disorder. And my geneticist is in the same system as my cardiologist. So my cardiologist will be able to see this, but just to make it easier, I'm not sure um, if this doctor is familiar with other stainless steel syndrome, but just to like help, I'm just gonna highlight the portion that my geneticist wrote in my chart that's about like cardiovascular stuff, just so that he has that reference. Um, and then I'll probably just like make sure I let him know about the yearly echoes. So I'm gonna go make copies of these at my printer. So. I can bring them in. So let's go do that. <laughs> Welcome to my printer. I'm dumb. Um, so I haven't had to make copies, I guess, since I got my new printer. And apparently this printer doesn't make copies. I went to go lift the, the lid and it was just uh, ink. So I will have to take these over to my parents' house <laughs> to make copies. Wow. Okay. So that's not going to happen in this video. But just know that what I'm doing is I'm going to make copies. My geneticist notes, I actually already have multiple copies printed out. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight the cardiologist portion. <laughs> Okay, that's done. And now one of the last things I do is write a bunch of things in my notes that I want to make sure that I cover in the in the appointment. Another thing that you might want to do is see if someone can come with you to the appointment because they can help advocate for you. I think I'm going to go to this appointment alone because my fiance works. But I think I'll be okay because I've gotten better at advocating for myself and not letting doctors walk all over me. My last cardiologist didn't even want to run the tilt table, but I advocated for that. So, you know, find a person. That would be another thing to do. But now I'm just going to go ahead and write down some things I want to discuss. So, the first thing is I'm going to remember, I'm going to ask about the yearly echoes. And then I'm going to ask about my ECG results. Other things for me personally is how much salt I should be having, compression sock strength slash brands that they may know of, if I would benefit from, what was I gonna say? Oh, medications. And then I'm gonna write down some key like symptoms, the ones that affect me the most. And for me, that's heat intolerance. That's, that's a bad one. Those ones make my symptoms so much worse. Standing stagnant because when I go into doctor's appointments and they ask me my symptoms, literally sometimes my mind goes blank and I forget about everything. So it's helpful to write that stuff down. And then obviously positional changes because that's kind of the key thing that happens with POTS, but yeah, and then the fatigue. And there's one more thing I'm gonna ask about, but I'm not gonna share it yet because I don't even know if I'm gonna have the courage to ask him about it and also because I don't want people to judge me on it before it even happens, so I wrote that down. I don't know if I'm gonna ask about this or not, but I know there's other like autonomic testing I think people get done. 
I don't know if I need that or if I'd benefit from that, but I'm just gonna write it down just in case that comes up as a topic. I feel like that's good. For me, this is good because I mainly wanna go there to establish care and just get the basics done. <laughs> um, nothing too crazy is happening with my pots, so that's good. So I think that's everything. And then, you know what? I need to double check where the address is and I need to check the parking situation because that's something that's always um, stresses me out. So you wanna figure that out too if you're going to like a new place. I know I know it's in a place that I do not like. It's right there, right in the center of it. Okay, let's see, parking situation. Can I park here? Oh no. I think I might have to park in a parking garage. No, okay, so I'm gonna have to get there early because it looks like I'm gonna have to park in a parking garage and walk a little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay, this looks like a ginormous building. Okay, we're getting there early. This, uh, it's where I hate, it's where I hate, I hate, it, I hate it. My appointment's at 8.30 a.m. So I'm gonna have to leave way ahead of time because it's 27 minutes away and the parking situation is not great. So let's calculate. And there's school now, so there's that. Honestly, I think I might leave an hour early. So I'm gonna say leave at 7.30 and that should be enough time. And I'll write the address here in the same note just so I know. And another thing that I do if it's like early appointments like this is I'll pick out like my outfit ahead of time and I'll make sure like my backpack is all stocked with my medical supplies and everything is kind of together so I really don't have to think about it and I can just get up, get ready, like brush my teeth, brush my hair, get dressed, and then hop right in the car and go. I think that is everything. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any other tips for like new doctor's appointments and stuff, let me know what they are so maybe I can benefit from them or other people can benefit from them. Let's just all help each other out. I just can't forget to go make copies of those for next week. I always feel like I'm forgetting something, but I hope you enjoyed this video. And I mean, if it helped at least one person, that makes it worth it. If it helped no one, well, that's okay because it actually got me to prepare for my doctor's appointment. And now I don't have to think about it. It is in a week and I'm all set to go. Minus the copies that need to be made. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to give this video a like and a comment and to subscribe for new videos every Saturday. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, the flowers in my garden never looked as bright as day. Like a happy child of work.